Are you ready to work on our last umbrella? Let's get at it then. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and today we are gonna work on our last umbrella block for our spring showers quilt. So that means that we are a little more than halfway done, or at least after we finish this block. We will be a little more than halfway done with our first row already. How exciting. All right, so today we get to make that cute little frog today too. Mm. Did you see the Kimberbell video about the spring showers and the little frog hopping? Oh my gosh, <laughs> so cute. Um, little did we know he's gonna be made out of felt. <laughs> so um, today is block three. And so I'm getting my uh, fabrics out of my little packet and my room is staying all clean. And so today what we are going to need is our background fabric first. It is the plain gray, um, it's a silky solid, and we're gonna start with this cut at eight and a half by eight and a half, eight and a half by eight and a half, and make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. This is a big block, so you, it's just more prone to um, puckering when it's a larger block. But using a fusible stabilizer on the back and also when we use that basting stitch to hold it in with our quilting design, that helps a lot too. So plain light gray for those of you that have not pre-cut. I know a lot of people didn't pre-cut because it's hard to see which fabrics they are. So plain gray for our main background and it is cut to eight and a half by eight and a half. And then we have those umbrella um, pieces again. So those, it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty happy with these. So I store mine with it already fused on and with the um, paper topping on the top of it. And some people said that they had curling. I'm pretty sure they didn't back those with fusible stabilizer because mine's like a card. <laughs> this is not curling at all. So I did back my fabric with fusible stabilizer. And then on top of that, you peel off that iron um, vinyl and put it over the top of it. And then you put the paper on the top of that and that's when you iron it and then I stored it all together. So that is great, I think it's so fun. So let's talk about what we need, sorry. So on um, the outer canopy piece, it's gonna be cut to six by four, and it's like a salmon color of plain pink. So it's a silky silky solid, I think those that's what those are called, um, but no design on it. So like a salmon color cut to six by four. And like I said, then you're gonna add on that um, vinyl iron topping. I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but anyway. Um, and I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. So that's the outer canopy. For the inner canopy, um, we are gonna cut our main, our fabric for the inner canopy to three by three and a half. And it is that pinkish red with flowers on it so cute i love this one i think this was from make yourself at home too i'm not sure um anyway and then back it or top it sorry top it with three by three and a half vinyl um iron topping and then put your um piece on there and iron it on so we will go over that more in the directions when we get to that part um but i did back these with fusible stabilizer nice and crisp i i highly recommend that so that is for the inner canopy, three by three and a half, and then our cute little frog. So this is called prickly pear felt. It's a Kimberbell felt. We're gonna cut this to three by three. You don't wanna back this with anything. Leave it just as, leave the felt as it is. It will work just fine without any additional stabilizer. So three by three for the prickly pear felt for our cute little frog. And then we are gonna quilt this block. So how is the quilting in the hoop going so far? For those, we have lots of newbies doing this one. I wanna hear how it's going. Are you enjoying the quilting process? Are you understanding it? Um, I, I think it is such a great advancement from Kimberbell when they came out with the quilting designs uh, during Love Notes, like after the first week of Love Notes, they came out with the first set. And that was so exciting. And I got to announce them. 
<laughs> how fun was that so anyway um we are going to quilt this so whenever we quilt we use batting so our batting today is going to be seven by seven and the way that i determine the size of the batting is based on the final cut size so the final cut size of this project is six and a half by six and a half so that means that we want batting that is seven by seven it doesn't have to be exactly seven by seven because we're going to trim it anyway but at least seven by seven will make sure that it tacks down in that second step of our quilting so seven by seven for your batting and then for our quilting today we are going to use a quilting design any quilting design that is six by six i'm going to use weather three we used that on our first umbrella that was the one with the wind so pretty um, i ended up using so um, of the thread kit I ended up using the um, pale mint, I think it was called, for my thread for the wind. And I thought that that was a really good um, color for on the wind. And then I used um, this, what was it, L70. There's a link under this video for this metallic thread. It is not part of the thread kit and it is totally optional. There is a very nice teal color it's called Tidewater, and that would work fine for your rain. But I decided to go with the metallic, so I went with this Thread Art L70. I think it, it came out really fun. I haven't decided for sure if that's what I'll use again today. I might use this L68 because I really like this one. This one is actually more sparkly um, when it stitches out, but this one is a nice contrast because I didn't want my um, wind color and my uh, rain color to be too too close in color so that's why I went with the darker one and this uh, fabric our main fabric that light gray I think the darker teal would probably stand out better for the rain but we'll see when I get there and it's totally optional whatever you want to do if you haven't already definitely order your thread kit Daylily Fabric Shop is getting more in this week and it just makes it really easy to determine um, what colors go with your fabric and it's a great way to build up your thread stash too. So I am going to use Weather 3. If you are using, and I think it was in vertical if I recall. Uh, let me see. Horizontal, sorry. Weather 3 in horizontal. So that's important too is you want to make sure because this design does come in in horizontal or in vertical. Um, so I am using the horizontal weather three and six by six if you are using a five by seven hoop if your largest hoop is a five by seven hoop then you need to watch that first tutorial i did a whole tutorial just for those that are using a five by seven hoop and that will be the tutorial going forward throughout this project i'm not going to make one on every single project um, so you'll want to watch that one um, to see how to do the quilting in the hoop but i'll tell you all you do is you would do two hoopings. One is four by six and one is two by six. You can easily use your clear blue tiles or you can do it with the method that I show on the video. I show both the clear blue tiles and without the clear blue tiles. So um, that's for the five by seven users. For everyone else, you're gonna use a six by six quilting design, which means that I'm gonna use my eight by eight hoop. It fits best in an eight by eight hoop. Um, and I think that's it. We get to make that cute frog today. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just always think of him hopping um, on that video. So I'll be picturing that on my block today. So that's all. Let's go ahead and get started on our last umbrella block.
Hey everyone, so someone asked me about um, whether I take out the uh, stabilizer in the seam allowance and the answer is yes. So if you look at every single tutorial that I've done, I always say take the basting stitches out and then trim away the excess stabilizer. So you can see my, um, my seam allowances are always all clear and that's why. But I also want to point out that there are some that choose to use the basting stitch as their cut line. And I just want to warn you on that. Um, it, the basting stitch and all of the quilting or the embroidery design, everything comes in just a little bit. And that's why we cut our fabrics larger at the beginning. And then it will shrink down just a bit with the quilting and the embroidery and the satin stitch and all of that. So that includes the basting stitch. So if you are using that as your cut line, it will be pulled in just a bit and your blocks may not measure up when you're putting them all together. So I just wanted to give that warning. I've given that warning before in past tutorials, but for the spring showers, we haven't discussed that. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, it's your quilt, do it how you wanna do it. But just keep in mind that if you are using the basting stitch as your cut line, you could have an issue with that. In fact, I tested at one time because I was curious about it because um, some people were saying that they do it as their cut line and one thing I noticed is that with the rotary cutter it was harder to get a straight cut because it's going over those stitches but also I measured after and it does it shrinks in just a little bit and it was off so that's something to keep in mind so yes I always take out the basting stitches first and then I trim all the excess stabilizer and you can see from the back of my blocks that my quarter inch seam allowance is all there and all clear and ready to be sewn together. So that's my little tidbit on the basting. And I know you guys always enjoy seeing my shirts. So today is this fun umbrella shirt I made just for this project, spring showers. I made a few while we were waiting for spring showers to be released. I got to make a few new shirts, which is really nice since most of mine are at least five years old. So this was fun. I love this one. This is a mashup of designs. And because of Embrilliance Essentials, I was easily able to do this. So the the, um, the rose umbrella design is from Embroidery Boutique and the hearts I added on um, easily manipulating it and bringing it over into Embrilliance Essentials and the the hearts are from if I recall creative applique. there is underneath this video there is a link to both designs and then also which um, font that I used so you can see I put dance in the rain and I angled it and <laughs> I think this is so fun the shirt is from Macy's I checked online for you and there aren't any more sorry um, I did order it online and the shirt, there's one left, but it's a petite large. So if you are a petite large and you have that one, um, there's one available left on online. So look on Macy's.com, but, um, fun sweater to add a fun design to. I hope I've been seeing, by the way, everybody's been making shirts. So we did a tutorial, um, specific to Embrilliance Essentials and specific to what works great. So no puckering and where to place the design and all the tips on what products I use for that. Um, there's a link under this video. I will add that. Um, but so since then, everybody's been posting all these pictures of shirts that they're making and I love it. It's so fun. It's so great to see because a lot of people were so scared to make a shirt and it's not scary. It's not hard. It's a learning experience. It's a different skill than the quilting blocks, but it's fun. And so anyway, this is my shirt today and we are ready to get started. You know what's funny is I always say we're ready to get started and then I post the shirt part at the very end of the video. 